Today's video is quite special to me. Ah, I'm so excited. <laughs> Disappointing doesn't begin to cover it. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready for battle. Let's go. I am so extra. Hi everyone, my name is Kushi Kishore and this is my booktube channel. I do vlogs here, challenges, I talk about the books I like, the books I don't like, and hopefully I will branch out to other exciting things as well in the future. If you're new here, then welcome, and if you're not, then welcome back. I appreciate your return and your support and your love. And also, if you're new here, I hope you choose to stay. I hope you choose to subscribe and join the family and just enjoy and have a good time with me. So as you can tell by the title and also by the intro of this video, today's video is going to be about Iron Widow, which is my most recent read. I never thought I would make this video, like at least not for this book. And it's pretty upsetting and disappointing, but I guess the higher your expectations are, the harder you will take the disappointment. So here we are. And I think what's worse for me is the fact that so many people out there love this book and hype it up so much. I really feel like such an island when I say I don't like it. Like, am I the only one out there? Like, I mean, I know for a fact that I'm not. Like, there are other one-star reviews that I've read as well that I do plan on mentioning later on in this video just because I found them hilarious and they make such clever points as well. When compared to all the other reviews, there are so little people who don't like this book that actually speak out about it. So I thought I would sit down and talk you through why I personally just did not like this book. People who love this book I do welcome you into my comments. Tell me why you like this book so much. Let's have a conversation because I am struggling to make sense of this. I gave this book 1.5 stars. My main question to you is, are we so excited to see women do cool things that we are ready and happy to overlook any sort of toxicity like what i mean is it is horrible that we don't get to see women doing many cool things in stories and movies i mean it is getting better now but there's so much more room for progress but our starvation for well-written and powerful female characters might be making us accept harmful narratives and one of these narratives i believe is iron widow and before i completely like break this book down and tell you why it made me want to jump out of a window i do want to appreciate the good that i found in the book because there's always good if you know to look for it i appreciate the things i got to learn from this book like about chinese culture and rituals and i appreciate having the opportunity to educate myself about things I didn't know before. Um, I appreciate the tender and sweet moments we got, especially with the boys. I appreciate the ending of the book in a way, like the pro plot twist. Like I really appreciate the concept. I actually love the concept, but oh my God, I just wish it was written better. Like it has so much potential. It's so, so cool. But the way it was written, it just, you know, like fell flat for me. I also like, I, I want to say as a writer myself, I understand how hard it would be to write a whole, like a whole ass book. Like it's insane. It's a lot of work. And I want to appreciate the fact that the author did it and it must have taken a lot of effort. But I want to be honest with you guys. And I just want to tell you why this book did not work out for me. Here we go. I'm gonna try and keep this video fairly spoiler free and just talk about the book in general. Before we dive in, I would say this is your opportunity to go grab yourself a drink, a snack, settle down, get comfy because I have things to say. 
I also plan to have timestamps for this video, so I'm gonna have a whole section on just the main character, then I'm gonna have a whole section on the story itself, like the wall building and just the things that stuck out to me in the story that didn't work for me, and then a whole section of me reading bits and parts of other people's reviews where they bring up really clever and important points and full credits to them for that. I have my trusty reading journal here and word for word let me read out what I wrote after reading page 39. It's hard to connect with a character that is so filled to the brim with rage and bitterness. And this might just be a personal thing, like maybe it's just me that I don't like or I find it hard to connect with characters like that but for me she felt very one note. She has every right to be feeling these emotions but it's a struggle because we haven't seen her vulnerability even once or seen her engage with something she likes apart from Yizzy who she is so cold towards. I assume she liked her big sister and hence the whole vengeance thing but we haven't been shown it, just told it. And that is another big problem that I have with this book is we are told about things, we don't get to see them so we don't get to build a connection and I find it difficult to feel any sort of way about these important things when I haven't seen or experienced it, you know what I mean? And like. This whole story happens because of her elder sister, right? The story starts with Zetian wanting vengeance for her elder sister and that's what makes the whole story happen and it's just insane how we know nothing about the big sister. Like, nothing. We as readers get to have no connection with the big sister whatsoever. A couple videos ago, if you watched, it was my weekly vlog, I was talking about how well this same thing was done in Amari and the Night Brothers by B.B. Alston. We had a missing character in that book and he wasn't relevant to the present plot, but we still got to know him and have a connection with him, which means the story meant more for us. And we just don't get that here. We know nothing about her big sister. We know nothing about their relationship or the things they did together or the things that were said. We, her big sister just appears in a dream once and that's about it. That's all we really get. The story from the very start would have meant so much more if we had just a little bit more about the big sister. Let me reiterate once again that this is a horribly patriarchal society and misogynistic and cruel towards women. And when I say I don't like this book, I am not siding with that nonsense at all. I said this in my previous video as well and I stand by it so hard. I recognize as a feminist and I do not side with any of that bullshit when I say I don't like this book. I'm specifically focusing this video on the things that I hoped would be better and more fleshed out and I expected more from honestly. About Zetian, as a character she stays pretty one note a lot of the time which is just anger, rage, vengeance. I personally would have wanted more depth and more layers to her character, her personality. Whatever we get is at the very end of the book, just a little bit, and I just don't think that's good enough. Because how is a person supposed to form a connection with the main character if we don't get at least a little bit of that in the beginning? This affected the way I felt when she achieved things. Like, at one point she achieved something that's pretty key to the story, and all I could feel was wariness towards her and where the story was going, like I, no pride, no joy, no happiness, just uncomfortable and unsure. It takes a lot for me to say that I didn't like the main character of a novel, it really does, but here I am saying it, I did not like Zetin as a main character. Here are some of the reasons why. I struggle to connect with her and she doesn't want to be judged for who she is and what her background is but she's very quick to do that to others which makes her quite a hypocrite I believe. She displays a lot of signs of toxic masculinity, she really does and when you read it it's obvious to point it out. She's also obsessed with power 
which i understand because when you're deprived of having something and when you get the opportunity to have it you go a little out of control i completely understand that but like she was obsessed with it to an unhealthy level i've written here if she were a truly feminist character who cares about other females she'd be involving other women and sharing her knowledge of how to survive but we never see her even attempt to do that if she actually wanted to change the system she tried to have help others or have conversations share her thoughts but all she cares about is killing men only towards the very end of the book do we see her think about doing anything that would change things for other women and i'm like by then what's the point i mean still it's good but like it's it's so late into the book you know what i mean that that her true intentions have already been revealed also she has no consideration of the fact that people come from different backgrounds and have different wants and needs and expect different things from their life sometimes it feels like she cares more about her glory and power over the overall safety of human kind i mean i think this girl truly just forgets the fact that they're in the midst of a war sometimes and i think it, it, and it's not just about the main character this is also about the writing a war a war is a big deal yeah but in this book it's only a big deal when she needs to go into a chrysalis and power up and do insane cool shit that's it that's it that's what i feel i find this very funny but she says she hates being a woman and wants to be strong and powerful like another character that we have in this book and that kind of confuses the whole feminist angle this book is going for like i like i understand being a woman in this world is torture but her actively saying that she wants to be like this one particular guy is just defeating the whole women can be powerful women are good and more than enough just as they are angle like it 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 defeats all of that she doesn't have a sympathetic bone in her body no respect for other people's decisions and situations and illnesses she invalidates them and their hardships because they're different to hers no respect for other people's decisions for example there's this other pilot that chooses to have kids and miss mom over here is immediately just off with the judging like immediately and i'm just like go i understand that you have fears and rules and standards that you live by for yourself but stop expecting other women to live by your standards as well like that just does not make sense also we don't know much about said zetin apart from the fact that she hates men we don't know what she was like before her sister died we don't know how she came to believe in such different ideologies when she was surrounded by villagers who all thought in the same way like sure we can imagine how it happened but why doesn't the book just tell us how it happened I would have appreciated knowing these things about her so much because it would have helped me connect with her from the very beginning which is which is what any reader wants to do they want to connect with the main character I understand that Zetian is meant to be this embodiment of feminist rage and vengeance but I feel like there could have been better ways to portray that exact thing i wanted more for her like more for her character like mind you me saying all of this doesn't mean i wanted her to be a likable character no i am happy reading a character who i don't like but still think is well written i just did not feel like there was enough depth to her character at all but yeah 
like it's just so disappointing and i can feel the frustration building in my head so i'm going to take a time out and go calm myself down and get a drink myself and then we move on to the next segment of this which He's probably afraid of the porch steps. So you just have to lay something down for him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Huh. Wow! Okay. I got my drink. I had an ice cream sandwich. I have cooled down. Yes, I think I'm very funny. I'm ready to jump back in and continue talking about how... Iron Widow is just not the book for me. Okay, I'm ready for round two. <clears throat> Let's jump right back in and I'm going to start with the author's way of portraying feminism in this book. It hits so many harmful stereotypes. Example like feminists are violent angry chicks who just want to kill men. That's a very harmful stereotype about feminism and this book literally is just that. And I find it very uncomfortable and slightly a little insulting towards the movement also where are all these girls that Zetian's protecting we keep hearing that oh i need to protect the girls more girls are dying that this but we don't they did do, they do not appear in this book especially the ones that are not as powerful as her they just don't show up and like we never see her connect with the people that she's trying to protect like not even once and for me that's just a massive missed opportunity I think the worst part is a lot of the time I got this feeling like this book is trying to say to do anything about a misogynistic patriarchal society like this you need to kill and punish all men. And while I myself have wanted to murder certain male characters in this book from time to time or a lot of the times, I don't see how this is a useful message in the grand scheme of things like throughout the whole book. I don't see how that's useful at all. Like what happened to trying to empower your fellow females, your fellow human beings? Trying to talk to them and convince them to let go of harmful beliefs and traditions. What happened to all of that? Just nope. Instead, we spend most of this book thinking about killing men. Quite literally, like I you think I might be exaggerating here if you haven't read this book, but I am serious. Also, I found it hilarious and insulting how almost every man in this story, apart from the two she's involved with, is a villain. Like they have no they they're not fleshed out characters. They don't have a personality to them apart from he abuses and uses women for his personal gain. That's the tagline for almost every single man apart from the two she's involved with. Speaking of the boys, one thing I was really excited for this book was the polyamorous relationship and like the representation, and I was excited because this would be my first novel reading. um a polyamorous relationship and i was excited to see how the chemistry works in something like that and how the characters would handle it and while i understand that romance isn't the main thing in this book like it's not even a priority i was very 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 let down because i did not feel the chemistry i did not like the way they suddenly just became a thing i hated that the main character went from not caring at all for these people to all of a sudden caring about them and i just i don't know there was so much potential so many opportunities 
the world building apart from the status of women because that's been very clear from page one but the world building is very poor in my opinion i barely understand the whole spirit pressure thing and i wish they'd explain the whole elemental thing a bit more to us because i don't understand that either it's just words being thrown at me at this point and we have no idea how the hunden husks the alien husks become new chrysalises like that's brushed under the rug saying only the high senior engineers are allowed to know okay that's a very convenient way to not put in the effort to tell us some of the mechanics of this world i guess that would have been something very cool for us to know in my opinion like how the chrysalises are made and like the process after the hundens the aliens are killed we don't know much about why the war is going on up until the very end in fact even in the very end we don't really find out the ending the wonders that ending that idea could have done if it just had a little bit more like slightly better writing to support it uh, the frustration i tell you like the concept is so cool and i love that kind of thing and it did make sense but still i want it more i would have appreciated more of a setup towards that kind of plot twist you know from the very beginning of the book and i would have like there were hints but there should have been more i feel but yeah all in all as you guys can tell, I did not like this book very much. And now I'm going to go through my Goodreads and read out some very specific reviews for you because I found them hilarious and so on point. This is Lexi's one star review. But the main thing I wanted to point out from this review was them saying, Zetian's journey is like, boom, revenge, boom, I'm at the story location, boom, I'm actually more mentally strong than anyone else here. It's all cliff notes. We don't really get time to marinate in the universe or time to understand it or the people who live in it. And I agree, like a hundred percent. This is Sophia's one star review, yeah. This book has no nuance whatsoever. Satoti does not exist. Zetian goes on long monologues telling us word for word the message of the book. She takes topics with great potential to be explored further and with more depth and punches them repeatedly, basically. She removes any profundity and pretends to be a savior while actually hurting women more than she helps them. She has no long-term vision and it makes me want to cry. Zetian is deranged and delusional, but she's being promoted as, so as someone we're supposed to support. Feminism is cool. Feminism is great. I love it. It's awesome. The world needs it. But this is not feminism and pretending it is just undermines the movement. Yes. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I just saw Shiranjay Zhao's uh, own goodreads rating they rated their own book five stars and the review starts with info caps enforce your lust pathetic gender role patriarchy well clearly we're angry i can sense that but <laughs> why <laughs> with this book why Ooh. This is this is something I found in the comment section of a of a review of this book on YouTube, um, a negative review, and this person's like, and the ultimate message of this book is not that women are equal to men, but that this one exceptional woman is equal to men because she's not like other girls, and I agree. That I agree that that's what this book is trying to tell us. And another one that I found, and this was again in the comment sections of the YouTube video, is... And I found this hilarious because it makes so much sense here. Zetian mentions at some point that there are 327 chrysalises in the army. It's 329, but you get the idea. So that means 327 pilots are in active service, right? 
Each pilot has more than one concubine for obvious reasons, so we get several concubines per pilot. And if we were to just take seven as a rough figure, I think, 327 into seven is 2,289 active concubines, and they die and have to be re replaced so often. So that means you probably have nearly 10,000 concubines that come and go in one year. And it's a system that has gone on uninterrupted for hundreds of years. And then this person in full caps, yeah? How come there aren't more population problems? It doesn't matter at that point how misogynistic the society is. This is a matter of basic community survival at this point. And I agree. Like, do the math. It doesn't make sense. But I guess, like, that's something that's easier to ignore for me than the other stuff i don't know it's just like all of it put together it's just not a book i enjoyed <laughs> like it wasn't the best time and look if you enjoyed the book this video is not me trying to come for you for enjoying this book this video is just me saying it didn't work for me and i wish it did but too bad i can't have everything i want i've also read in many platforms that people who love this book are harassing the people who don't when they express their negative views on this book and honestly my what i want to say to that is if you love this book then good for you like read it love it and just live your life there's no need to go around harassing people for having their own views and i guess this is also me trying to say please don't come at me for not liking this book it's just what i think and i will always be honest about the books i read so that was my review my what went wrong for me with iron widow if you like videos like this where i talk in depth about books that i like or i don't like if you like book content i would say stick around i would say subscribe comment let me know down in the comments if you've read this book and what you thought about it in fact if you like this book then let's have a civil conversation i would love to hear your thoughts genuinely but yeah click the notification bell so that you don't miss any of the videos i post and i'm very excited for the next video because i've already started filming it and i think it's going to be very sweet so i can't wait and i hope you guys are having a lovely day a lovely week a lovely night wherever you are take care of yourself stay healthy stay safe and i will see you very soon in my next video